Okay, guys, what's up? I'm recording on here now. I'm live on Instagram. I'm just sharing a few things. First of all, I want to say happy anniversary to my beautiful wife. She's sleeping right now. And we're in the Bahamas. We've got a beautiful view of the ocean. And uh, thanks to my mother-in-law, she got us a beautiful room in the Cove at Atlantis. So if you stay at the Atlantis, I recommend that you um, try out the Cove as well. The rooms are beautiful and the views are beautiful. And um, there's a few extra pools I think that you can get into, but it, it's, it's awesome. And um, what's up, Jake? How's it going, man? And uh, so I, I went live on Instagram. I know I've been sharing a lot of principles, mental principles, all sorts of stuff. And these are things that I've learned. And um, I finished a book a couple weeks ago, Mel Robbins wrote called, you know, the five second rule. And I wanted to share a bunch of her principles that she uses. And it's really cool for me because as I'm listening to the book and going through it, I realized this, there were certain things that I, that I do naturally. And a lot, of, a lot of my friends and people would say, you know, you just have this like courage, this thing where you just go and do stuff. You have like almost no fear. And um, there's certain things that she breaks down that, that makes me realize that I do them naturally, but these are tools that can help you guys and kind of overcome your fears and just help, you know, help make a better life as far as making decisions and also dealing with fear. Because as she says, you know, fear is a real thing. Fear is a real emotion, but we can turn it into excitement because fear and excitement are, are sort of the same thing, but it just depends on what our brain you know, turns it into, whether it turns it into, Hey, whoa, 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 we shouldn't be doing this. Or like, man, this is going to be exciting. And uh, at the very end, I'm going to talk about anchor thoughts and how that can be involved. And that's something that anchor thoughts that I did naturally that I never even knew until I read this book and she broke it down. And I was kind of realizing these are just things that I do naturally. So I know it's a Sunday. A lot of you guys are watching football and uh, normally I have a, a mastermind call that I do with a few friends and just to help them go along with their journey. And none of them are available today. They're, they're busy. They're doing, you know, they have their own plans or they're traveling a lot. So, which is really great. I love it. And I encourage everybody to do, you know, do everything they can on Sundays, even if it is just watch football and follow your fantasy team. I'm not much of a fantasy guy. I'm more of a real life guy. I would like to rather just go out and play with maybe a group of 10 friends and go play a football game. Um, and uh, I don't like to bang heads together because, <laughs> as you know, it causes brain damage and it just doesn't feel good. Um, I mean, you get whiplash and your head hurts and you get headaches and whatever. So I want to jump right into it. And I just took a few lessons from, you know, Mel Robbins book, The Five Second Rule. So if you haven't, if you haven't read that book or listened to it, I listen to a lot of books lately. If you haven't, I recommend, I highly recommend that you go and, and read this book or listen to it. And I just chose a few lessons. She sends out emails that kind of gives you daily lessons for the first 30 days. And, you know, you go through these things and she sends you these things. You learn so much. You learn so much. And, you know, you kind of say to yourself, I know some people say, yeah, you know, Zach, well, you're just different than me. You have this personality that's just like, whatever, let's just go do stuff and figure stuff out later. And um, these are things that you can train your brain to do. These, these are choices that you can make. I know there's fears and doubts and everything. Um, worrying about what other people are going to say, even worrying about what you're going to look like. And even if you look like a fool, it turns out to be great in the end. And uh, e even, even just recently, one of my friends shared with me that they don't like to, you know, ask people to kind of move if they're like at a bar and, hey, can we use that seat? You know, it's kind of an uncomfortable situation, but it ended up being great actually she, that she did do that because the person moved over, they started a conversation with each other. And, um, and now they may even end up buying some stuff from their, from their Etsy store online. So it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes you can do that, but let's jump right into it. Lesson one, I want to talk about your temporary problems and your permanent problems. There's a difference between those. And you know, our temporary problems are something that we have the power to change. We have this power to change all these temporary problems. Um, and then there's permanent problems that we just kind of just got to let go. We got to realize that they, they're just a part of the universe. They're a part of somebody else. And that's just how they are. So letting go is huge as well. Letting go for me um, in the last year has been one of my number one struggles. One of my number one things that I've been trying to overcome is letting go. And, um, you know, breaking down these temporary problems and these permanent problems, you know, our temporary problems, for example, are our body shape, our relationship, our work issues, our school issues, you know, for you young followers out there, you know, you go to school and there's these temporary problems. Maybe it's someone just kind of bullying you. Um, you know, certain things like that. And these are temporary problems that we can kind of change how we approach the situation. And now our permanent problems 
are, you know, obviously time. We can't change time. We can't, you know, add hours to the day, how old we are, you know, our past, our family, and, you know, other people, their personalities and their choices. And, and some people are just hard. Actually, everybody's hardwired with certain thoughts that they've, that they've born with, that they've developed growing up a little bit. So, um, you know, she talks about these temporary and these permanent problems. And we have the ability to change our temporary problems, but for our permanent problems, we actually have the ability to decide how we're going to react to these problems. And um, so what she recommends is that she, you, know, you write down, you make a list of the complaints that you have in your life, whether they're about temporary or permanent problems. And we actually make a full list and then we actually go through and we decide what can we do about each problem. If it, if it is a temporary problem and we have the ability to change it instantly because our brain, we can just change our brain and how we think about it, that's fine. Do it. Now with the permanent problems, we just have the, the ability to choose how we want to react to it. So however we want to react to it, however we want to change how we feel about the situation is what we mostly can do. The permanent problems like time and stuff like that, we cannot change time. So the way we react to it and the way we plan it out in our day is something that we can change ourselves. So we can make those changes in that area. So the first one is temporary problems as opposed to permanent problems and realizing which ones are temporary and which ones are permanent and how we can change how we feel about them. And um, so, yeah, that's the first lesson. The second lesson, I'm going to try to keep this short today, guys. I know the Facebook lives and the Instagram lives, they get kind of long and people just talking and trying to put their, their ideas on you. But these today are not my ideas there. I'm just going to share kind of my relationship to them and uh, how I've experienced them in my own life. But these are once again, Mel Robbins ideas in the five second rule. Five second rule talks about just saying five, four, three, two, one and taking action. And uh, later on, I'm going to talk about how we can wake up actually to improve our day and improve how we go about our day to help us with certain situations as far as overwhelm or anything like that. So, um, this is awesome. Thanks for following. I know some of you guys are here live and, um, on Instagram, but this is mostly for recording for my mastermind group that wasn't able to happen today. And so lesson two is about objectivity. Objectivity is, um, you know, deciding how we can make decisions, not necessarily make decisions for somebody else, but if you've ever been in a situation of, uh, I love my uh, Ace Ventura hair going on here today, not necessarily making decisions for other people, but then there's a situation when you have other people you have to make a decision with, and sometimes they're indecisive, and sometimes you make the decision, so it's hard to make that decision as a third party person. You know, you make decisions for yourself. You make decisions what you think is best for them or what you think is best for yourself, but it has to be objectively, right? So it's really hard to step out of your own emotions, their emotions and put yourself in the third party. And what she talks about objectivity is when we're making a decision for a group or for somebody else is actually stepping out and looking at somebody that you admire. So whether it's a famous person like Tony Robbins, famous person like Mel Robbins, um, I know some people, and you know, this is very humbling, some people admire me and the decisions that I make and, and how I go about my life and just jumping into stuff. So if it's somebody you admire, it could be your mom, your dad, your brother, anybody. You know, I really admire how my brother goes about certain things. It's, um, he lives this life, of, he doesn't really care too much about what other people think. Um, there's certain situations when he does, but he just goes and does pretty much what is best in the situation or what may be best for just him in particular. And she brings up LeBron James. And when LeBron James actually left the Cleveland Cavaliers, he, you know, the press was talking to him and saying, you know, this is, are you sure this is the right decision? He was with the Cavaliers. He grew up in Cleveland. And LeBron James actually said, you know, LeBron James has to do what is best for LeBron James. Speaking in, he's almost spoken like fourth person there. I don't even know if that exists, the fourth person, but we can actually step outside and think about, you know, what do you think Richard Branson would do in this situation? Or what do you think Oprah would do in this situation? And these are people that, that Mel Robbins actually talks about. These are people that she looks up to. And, um, you know, she, that's how she makes decision as far as the objectivity. So that's lesson two. Try to take something that, try to make a decision from somebody that you admire might make the decision. You know, your mom, your dad, anybody that you admire. It could be somebody famous. And I like to use this as far as you can even take those traits from these people. Take the, the confidence from, you know, say a Michael Jordan, his confidence. Pretend you have his confidence 
and take it into everyday decisions or everyday life. Or even when you go play in adult league basketball, pretend that you're somebody. Make believe that you are LeBron James or Michael Jordan. And this helps with, the, with making decisions and just kind of going through life, having fun and enjoying the moment. And, um, you know, I have a uh, comment here on my Instagram live. Why aren't you playing baseball anymore from Meyer? Hey, um, I just decided to retire a couple years ago. So that's that. And now I'm trying to take the same desire and passion and love for that game. And I'm trying to spread the love into people's hearts and the people to make everybody's life a little bit better. And especially how the world's going now, a lot of negativity. I want people to bring more positivity to the world and more love and, and just more genuine and, and be yourself and, and go and just have fun and enjoy life. And the more you can enjoy life and bring love and positivity to the world, it can just make the world a better place. So this is where I'm bringing my passion to now. Um, so lesson three, we talk about overwhelm. Everybody on this recording or on this live has been overwhelmed some point in their life. They have been overwhelmed at some point in their life, whether it's for work or whether it's for play or by your friends or by your family. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up. Thanksgiving can be an overwhelming situation. You're going into, you haven't seen your family in maybe a year or maybe a couple years. You may be the first Thanksgiving gathering you're having in five or 10 years. And uh, it could be overwhelming just, you know, telling what you're doing now and asking them what they're doing and spreading, you know, all this stuff going on. It could be really, really overwhelming. And uh, Mel Robbins does it great. She, she really talks about overwhelming and how to get rid of overwhelm. And what she does is she actually takes a pitcher of water and it's a blue color water. She dumps it into this mason jar and she's saying, you know, emails, texts, all this stuff that's going in your brain, you know, what you got to do today, when you got to pick the kids up, you know, what you're going to do after work, what you're going to do before the weekend, what you, what you have to do, you know, during the weekend for Monday to get ready for Monday and all this stuff, she keeps pouring it in and just keeps overflowing, overflowing, overflowing in this mason jar. And that's, that's when our brain gets overwhelmed. It was an empty mason jar, which was space in our brain. But then when you start pouring all this stuff into it, you know, you become overwhelmed and, you know, to get rid of our overwhelm, she gives a great exercise. And I recommend all you guys do this. I recommend that you to get rid of overwhelm, we write down everything that's on our mind, everything. And actually in the video, she actually speeds it up and she writes down everything on her mind, everything on her mind, doesn't matter what it is, what you have to do, what you're going to do, you know, something in the past that you might have done, what you're thinking about, who you're thinking about, write down every single person, everything, everything on your list that you have to do that's going through your brain at that moment, okay? And then the next thing you do is you actually take out a highlighter. Take out a highlighter and you choose three of the things that you should do. Obviously, you could do everything. You could do everything and be ultimately overwhelmed, right? But we're trying to beat this overwhelmed feeling, okay? We're trying to beat this overwhelmed feeling. So we take out a highlighter and we highlight the three things that we should do right now. No matter what it is, what we just got to make sure it's important to us. Make sure it's important to you, okay? Make sure that these three things you're highlighting, you can do, you should do right now, and they're important to you, okay? And this actually, it can solve a lot of our overwhelm. No matter what we're facing at that time, we can solve a lot of our overwhelm just by doing this simple exercise. And, um, you know, on to the next one, on to lesson four. I've actually had seven lessons here, and we're, we're over halfway through. I, I want to make this short. These things get really long sometimes. And, um, you know, that was overwhelm. Now we're on to lesson four. And lesson four actually talks about our addiction to our cell phone. Everybody's addicted to our cell phone. There may be a few people that still have flip phones or whatever. They only use it to, to call. And, uh, but if you have a smartphone or anything, most of us are addicted to our phones. And, and, you know, I'm addicted to my phone as well. I'm super addicted to my phone. And uh, what, sh what has really changed my life is the exercise that, you know, she talks about, and the next couple of exercises I'm going to talk about is actually how we wake up and where we put our phone before we go to sleep. So that way, when we wake up, we're not, we're not overwhelmed and we're not getting those things instantly into our brain, that garbage or that other, you know, other people's thoughts or other people's lives into our brain before we actually dig into our own brain and have our own thoughts come out. And so, you know, we, we love to check emails and texts and, and, and Facebook, social media, everything like this. And actually what this causes is a trigger of dopamine, which is the same thing what happens when you take heroin. And, you know, Mel Robbins really takes it 
to another level to where she actually does so much research and she actually puts science behind it. And she's discovered that they've done studies saying that un pe most people unlock their screen 150 times a day. Just unlocking the screen, whether they say it's to, you know, to check the time or whatever it is, and um, 150 times a day, that is an addiction. That is a super addiction, and we got to cut it, okay? Because this dopamine, you know, goes in our brain. We feel so good. We feel so good because we got a text or we got an email or we got somebody liked our video on social media, whatever it is, and this is actually a form of heroin in our brain. So, um, it, it's, it, I love it, Shane. Shane says instantly, guilty. We're all guilty, right? I've been on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter nonstop for the last couple of weeks, um, promoting all this stuff, trying to send love and positivity to the world. And we're all guilty of it, Shane. Thank you for admitting that he's raising his hand and his emoji. So, so um, actually, one thing that she talks about too is that 50% of people actually are opening emails and checking social media in the middle of the night. 2, 3 a.m. they wake up to go to the bathroom and then they pop their phone and they check, you know, they check their emails or they check their social media. You know, how many likes did my video get? Did somebody send me a message? And also we have this fear of like, maybe somebody has to get a hold of us in the middle of the night. You know, I'm important and, and most of us are. I'm important and maybe somebody, you know, a loved one close to me may need some help in the middle of the night. So we keep our phone within reaching distance. We don't even have to get out of bed. We just reach our arm over and we can grab it and we can scroll. We can fall asleep to scrolling or, and we can also wake up to scrolling. All right. So we never have room for our own thoughts to go through our brain. We don't give our, our brain enough space to actually think of our own ideas and, th and, and how to put them into action. Think of our own love or, you know, our own generosity, something that we want to do in the day. You know, thinking about ourselves is, is huge. Caring for ourselves is enormous. I love caring for other people and donating and, and doing all sorts of stuff to help other people and empowering them. But we ultimately have to take care of ourselves to begin with because that's what makes us happy. And so um, I've, done, I've been doing this for like the last month, man. It, it's so, so hard. And I keep my, I keep my notifications on whether it's my Facebook or my text, emails, I keep them all on. And what I do is I've, I've put my phone in the bathroom. You know, she, my, my bathroom is close enough to where I can hear my alarm go off. I can hear stuff, but I do, I put the do not disturb on. But my most important thing is just hearing my alarm, right? I want to get up and, and I, I have to get up. And what she talks about is saying five, four, three, two, one. Once you hear that alarm, get up and go, go turn it off and get up. Okay. And that's, that's the next lesson that we're going to do. And so put our phone out of reaching distance of, of, of our bed. It is huge, man. It's so hard. And I've actually stopped waking up and just scrolling or even falling asleep to scrolling. I, I do my scrolling, you know, 20, 30 minutes before I go to sleep. And then I go and I put my char I put it on the charger in the bathroom. That way I can still hear and I can still wake up to my alarm. But I, I've gotten out of the habit of, uh, and it's still work. It's still work, believe me gotten out of the habit of scrolling while I'm going to sleep or, or waking up to scrolling. And so um, you can actually take back control of your day. Mel Robbins, has she gives you these exercises and, and it's so hard. She even admits that it's hard for her to still do. She's been doing it for years now and she hates these things, but she actually took back of her day. Like she took back control of her day. Her day is not hijacked anymore. And so this five second rule book is amazing. I love it so much. And I, I, I can't recommend it enough. It actually has changed a lot of my habits that I've, that I've developed since getting a smartphone. You know, we've all developed these habits over the last, you know, five years, you know, a smartphone only came out like eight, nine years ago. And we've developed these habits where we can't even control our brain anymore. We can't even control our own thoughts. And so I just want to give you kind of a challenge is to put our phone not on our bedside table, put it somewhere where we actually have to get up to go and make an effort to get it. Now, sometimes putting it into the bathroom can even be a distraction because we get up in the middle of the night and we go and we grab it because it's right there. Okay, but we have to challenge ourselves. We have to make the choice to not grab it and scroll and check those notifications. Okay, and so the next, this ties right into the next lesson, which is the next challenge that she gives you, Mel Robbins. God bless you. I'm going to tag you in this video. Um, and uh, the five second rule is great. I love it. And lesson five is, you know, it's not 
we always think about how, when we have to wake up to get everything done in the day. Everything is, when, when do I have to wake up to have enough hours in the day, enough time in the day? But what we talked about earlier is those permanent, those permanent challenges, those permanent you know, distractions is, is time. Time, we cannot help time. So it's not about when we wake up, it's, it's how we wake up. And Mel does a great, she, she does this great challenge where to, she says tomorrow, and I challenge all of you tomorrow to do this. Now that your phone, you know, is away from our bed, okay? It's away from our bed. This is the toughest challenge, is not hitting the snooze button. Okay, because there's this thing that she actually scientifically proves and it's called sleep inertia. If you never heard of sleep inertia, it can actually affect your day up to four hours. The first four hours or hours of your day can be ultimately affected. And the first two to three hours are actually your most productive hours. So if you're still recovering from sleep inertia and you're trying to get sleep inertia and you get that feeling of grogginess and like, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. Oh, man, this has been ultimate for me. This has been life changing to where I just get up five, four, three, two, one, and go. I turn off the snooze. I don't even look at anything else on my, on my phone. I brush my teeth. And what I do next is I actually go out into the living room and I just grab a notebook and I just let my mind wander. I grab a cup of water. I wander and I write down anything that may help my business, that may help my day, my relationship with, you know, whether it's my husband or my wife or my parents, you know, my siblings. I write these ideas down and I just let my mind just kind of go. This way we can actually take control of our brain again and we can figure out what we're thinking and how we can change what we're thinking and change our choices to become a better you and to make a better life and just become happier and more positive and, and make some, some decisions that are just amazing that would be mind blowing. So I'm telling you, I challenge you to not hit the snooze button tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning's Monday. Everybody hates Mondays. I love every day of the week, uh, personally. I love every day of the week. And Monday, especially for a lot of people that have a nine to five job, is just horrible. I recommend you get up, don't hit the snooze button, and also, please do not check your emails, your notifications, your texts, anything, anything like that. Give yourself five, 10, 20 minutes to actually just have your own brain think for itself. Instead of feeding emails and texts and Facebook and Instagram and all this stuff, even my own Instagram, I send out early stuff, early motivational stuff. And I recommend you wait until you're actually somewhere in your own train of thought or on your way to work to where you can actually think of that stuff. Please do not just wake up to my face. <laughs> I highly recommend that you don't wake up to somebody else's face. Wake up to your own thoughts. Maybe you should wake up to your partner's face you know, your loved one's face that you're sleeping right next to say, I love you and all sorts of stuff and do all that, all that, all that cute cuddly stuff. But when you wake up and you get out of bed, have your own thoughts as well. Okay. So, um, the, 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 the sleep inertia is huge and hitting the snooze button is the number one cause to this. And it's because we sleep in these 90 to hundred minute sleep, um, sleep cycles. And once we hit that snooze button, our brain thinks we're falling right back into that 90 minute you know, that 90 minute sleep cycle. And if you notice when you do fall back asleep, sometimes on the weekend or whatever, we hit the snooze button. Um, sometimes you fall back asleep for that 90 minute period. It's kind of weird. And, and it's actually backed by science. So Mel, thank you for so much for bringing that to my attention because it has changed my life and I feel way more productive and I, I just have more energy, even though I have a lot of energy to begin with, but I have more energy. And, and one thing I think that people with kids is that they can't hit the snooze button. So I think, I think people with kids are, are they're, they're more productive and you find that once people have kids, they're like more driven. Obviously it's because they want to make money for the kids and give the kids a good life, but it's because ultimately they can't hit the snooze button. So they never really fall into that sleep inertia stage. They never really fall into that sleep inertia stage because they have to get up and take care of that kid or kids or however many kids you have. So um, I think it's amazing what what it can do if you don't have your phone by your bed and then you wake up without the snooze button, you just say five, four, three, two, one, which is the five second rule. And it actually activates your prefrontal cortex and you wake up and you go and you get the day and you take back your day instead of having it hijacked 
by everything that you have to do that day. Like, oh, oh my gosh, we get overwhelmed and it's crazy. Okay. And so that's the number one challenge that I give to you. Thanks to Mel Robbins. It's her idea. None of this, none of this stuff is my idea. I'm just relating it and I'm giving it to you. And I challenge all of you to take all these lessons and just try them out, try them out. And I know people are going to say, well, you can do that because that's how you think. That's what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. And I'm telling you, I've done this stuff naturally, but Mel Robbins breaks it down so everybody that doesn't do it naturally can actually go out and try it for themselves and rewire their brains to do something and change their habits and make choices for themselves again. Okay? And so... I jumping right into lesson six, almost done here, guys. She talks about motivation being garbage. And I've heard this before is that motivation, we don't want to be pushed by motivation. We almost want to be pulled by inspiration. And I've heard this from um, uh, Michael Beckwith, I actually believe it was. He's talking about, you know, he's is an advertisement for Mind Valley, which is his company making people's minds work for themselves, work, work for them as opposed to against them. And he talks about don't, don't be pushed by motivation, actually be pulled by inspiration. But Mel talks about our mind is actually designed to protect us. It's all about survival, right? We're all on this earth and our mind gives us these fears and doubts to protect us from anything that may happen. Okay. And so it actually does this thing called the spotlight effect and it puts the spotlight and it, and it goes on to these things that Every time we go into a situation, it spotlights what could happen and it pushes us away. It says, no, you know what? Um, I'm spotlighting exactly what could happen in these fears. And um, it, it's, it's incredible what our mind will do to protect us from any situation at all. Any situation, our mind is designed to just protect us. It's not there to make us you know, thrive it's not there to, to make a push us into a business deal. It's not there to sell a car. It's not there to do any of that stuff. It's there to protect us from every situation so we can survive. It's all about survival for our brain. And, um, you know, she says that you're always one decision away from, from a better anything, a better relationship, a better business a better life in general, a better vacation, you know, anything, anything. You're always one decision away from a better anything. And she talks about motivation being garbage. And because we, we don't want to wait until we feel like doing something because we're motivated at that time. We can't wait until we feel like doing something, whether it's business or friendship or in love. We can't wait to feel the motivation because it'll never come. Our brain is not designed to say, yeah, that's a good idea. Because we, we, we feel this feeling of, yeah, that's a good idea, but then our brain brings in the fears of, no, you gotta survive. You have to survive. So we cannot wait for the motivation to set in because then we're screwed, okay? It's just gonna be dead. It's gonna kill it. So that's why she uses the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, go. Five second rule is beautiful. Thanks, Mel. We appreciate it. And now I'm passing it on to some of my followers and uh, my mastermind group as well. And so this brings me to lesson seven, my final lesson, which is something that I've done my whole life naturally. And I couldn't figure out why. People always ask me, you know, how do you do that? How do you just hop on a plane and go to the Bahamas? You know, how do you just you know, hop in your car and just drive to Mississippi Valley State and just go to college for four years. You know, how, how do you do any of these things? And, and I, I really didn't know until, you know, Mel introduced me to these things called anchor thoughts. And these anchor thoughts are something that we can use, every, every single one of us can use. And it's tied in with a little bit of visualization, a little bit of, you know, and we, we want to just picture an anchor thought is actually something that we can use to push us through a situation. And she describes it within her fear of flying. Her fear of flying was something that she had to overcome. It was something that gave her super anxiety and panic attacks before she was flying anywhere. And she actually got to the point where she couldn't fly anymore. 
And she discovered these things called anchor thoughts. And what anchor thoughts are is we, we can picture what's going to happen once we get to the destination. So for instance, in her flying, she actually talks about her, she, her home is, is, is in Michigan and her family lives in Michigan. And so she was having trouble flying back to Michigan to, to visit her family. And what she would do is she would put these anger thoughts in and it has to be tied into whatever the situation is. So she's flying back to Michigan and she puts these anger thoughts in her head of her and her mother walking on the shores of Lake Michigan and share and spending time together, spending time with her family. And, and her fear instantly turns from this, oh my gosh, don't go flying to excited because she's going to be spending time with her loved ones or with her family walking on, you know, on the shores of Lake Michigan. And this is how I can just pick up and just drive a car to Mississippi Valley state to go play baseball somewhere. I've never been in the middle of the country. You know, this is a crazy idea for most of us. You know, we can't sit in the car for more than, you know, a couple hours, which is most of the reason why, but I had this thought of this beautiful moment being on a field playing against, you know, some of the top ranked teams in the country and actually living out my dream of being in college, playing baseball. And eventually one day, another anchor thought that I had was being drafted and playing, you know, in the major leagues. And so this is something my brain did naturally, but I'm breaking it down for you guys. We can put these anchor thoughts into our head to take it to the next level, to take it to the next level and do the things that we're afraid of, this feeling of fear, which is a, a totally like legit feeling, this feeling of fear. And we put these anger thoughts to, to, to actually get us to where we want to be. And it's amazing. These anger thoughts are, are so huge. If you've never heard of anger thoughts, I recommend that you try these things out. You know, taking a trip somewhere or actually approaching somebody that you may have had um, a faulty relationship. You may have had a fallout with somebody and, you, and you're so afraid of going and approaching these people that you're like, I don't know, it could turn out bad. We could may, may end up fighting. But you know, throw an anger thought in there of, it could just make the situation better. And think of that feeling of, I will feel so much better. I'll feel like this, this weight lift off my shoulder because this falling out is still affecting me. If it's not affecting you, let it go. But if it's still affecting you, put these anchor thoughts of, of what it might be. You, you may actually, at the end of the day, you know, picture yourself picking up your phone after you have that conversation with somebody you may have had a falling out with and, and picking up that phone and calling your other best friend and saying, hey, I talked to so-and-so and you know, I thought we might get in a fight or a yelling match, but we ended up actually, it, it, it went great. It went great. And that feeling of of that weight lean being lifted off your shoulder. So we have to relate our anger thoughts to whatever situation we're using them for. And I pretty much done with sharing all that information with you. This is only, you know, less than half of the stuff that Mel talks about in her five second rule book. So if you haven't listened to it, I, I highly recommend. And, and, you know, I want to use an example of one of my, one of my best friends, you know, um, she actually was going to a bar. She just recently started up a website, an Etsy thing for her to sell her art. And she, she always has this uncomfortable feeling of asking people to move so, so that there's enough room for people to sit at the bar. And, you know, she actually was re she was listening to the five second rule. She said five, four, three, two, one. And she actually just went and asked the person, Hey, do you mind if you just move over a little bit so we can sit here? And so they made enough room. She sat next to this person at the bar. And what happened next was they started this relationship and this, she said it was, they were one of the coolest people that she's ever met. And she told her about her, her, her Etsy store. And the person actually said, you know, I think I need some more artwork in my house. I think I'm going to go on there and I may purchase a few things. So it turned out to be like one of the best things that she's ever done, but she's been so afraid of doing this. And, um, you know, Mel Robbins five second rule actually took her to the next level and created this relationship and maybe even created a client out of it to where she can make art and, you know, make people's houses prettier and, you know, just a better life for everybody to spread some positivity and some artwork in the world. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And I recommend you guys try all these. If you're only going to try one, my recommendation, it's going to be tough. is to not hit the snooze button. And then also 
Don't just start scrolling as soon as you just wake up. Leave that phone somewhere where you can't just scroll. Have a notebook with you. Go sit down with a glass of water for 10 minutes and just write some thoughts down on a piece of paper. Let your brain wander and let your brain think before other people start thinking for you through emails and texts and social media. So that's it for me. I appreciate you guys listening. Thanks for, lo- thanks for signing in and, and actually going on to my Instagram Live and my recording for my mastermind group. I hope you guys learned something from this. I know you guys learned something from this. And um, Instagram peeps, peace. Mastermind peeps, peace. I love you all. And um, have a great day and just enjoy it. Embrace the day. Love everything that you do today, no matter what it is. Just love it and enjoy it. I love you all.